very good morning all of you for these uh, lectures on river equilibriums uh, in which we will discuss about uh, Lacy's equations, uh, river meandering and the regime relationship which is quite important for us to know it how does a river behave under changing discharge or the sediment load conditions. That is the bigger questions and that is what we try to address through the regime equations concept. Now, if you look at the next part what we are talking about which uh, more or less we are following it uh, Julian book as well as uh, partly we are following it the experience of uh, Indian railways engineers on how to protect the river banks. Uh, and uh, river training works for the railway bridges. So, both the things we are combining it to uh, discuss about what is the regime concept and how we can use the regime concept for the efficient river training works or the bridge protections, the stream flood protections of the bridge. So, if you look at that way, if I look at the last slides which is again I am repeating it to have a the basic uh, knowledge is that how the things are moves it so that one is the, the river survey uh, which we can do from the field level of studies, you can have the uh, drone level of studies nowadays or two days we can also use high resolution uh, satellite imagery to understand what is the river platforms and how the river meandering geometries, those are things we can uh, understand of the river and its uh, river corridor associations by conducting a thorough survey either at the field scale or using the satellite platforms we can do it. What we target it? The flow variables, sediment variables and the meandering characteristics. And once you get these all these variable data, the flow, sediment and meanderings, then you try to establish the relationship between that is the reasons you use the data mining tools, okay. uh, very older concepts like uh, correlation techniques, uh, now they have 3D visualization technique and there are lot of algorithms in the last two decades have been developed for data mining from a large data sets. There are a lot of examples and also the evaluations we can have. So, the basically is what we have, we have uh, this, these are the equations, the empirical relationship what today we will discuss about, the uh, Lacy's uh, concept and he also uh, as discussed earlier, the analytical studies focusing on very sense problems, large scale AD concept and entropy concept. We try to establish it, this relationship with the physics. That is what we try to do analytical solutions uh, of the river flow with certain assumptions to establish this variation cost concept, the large AD concept with the empirical equations, the entropy concept with the empirical equation. So, that is uh, the advanced level going on and uh, this is the flow charts what is there to know it how we can find the regime equations. Now, let me I go for the next ones is very interesting is that and if you look at the graphical lens relationships okay, which talk about is a balancing the river does a balancing between the stream powers that is what is the energy dissipations and uh, the carrying of the bed loads. These are balancing effect is there in a equilibrium river reach. So, if you look at that, it is a very interesting balance is there and if you try to look it, one side is a discharge and the stream slope or the river slope, okay. that is uh, discharge and into the stream slopes, it is indicating for us the stream power per unit weight, so, what is the stream power is there or the energy expenditures is there, that is what is balanced with uh, uh, bed loads and the sediment size. Okay. 
So, if there is an unbalance, either the bank will go for erosions level or the aggradations or depositions levels. If both are balanced, there is an equilibrium stage. If there is a the higher value of Q and S, the stream slope and this discharge, the product of discharge and the stream flow, which is a stream powers per unit uh, weight. That is what is indicating is that if it is this is the higher value that has to balance by the sediment size or the increasing the bed load. That is what will have a the bank erosion process will be uh, significantly go more or if you have a this case you have a aggradations. That is what is my suggestion is that you just sketch these diagrams try to understand it how does a river behaves if we change the sediment flow, change the discharge or the change the stream slope like we do the sand mining, we change the bed slope of the river systems. We have been doing the sand mining, gravel mining of the river bed. So, we are modifying the stream slope as we are modifying the stream slope what is going to happen whether it will be aggradations or degradations or you do the sand mining. So, just try to understanding that if I doing the sand mining which is today is a uh, very critical issue in our countries if you look at that. So, we you are increasing stream slope or the decreasing the stream slope. So, we are modifying the stream slope, we are changing this D 50 value mostly we are doing the positives, we are armoring the things. So, we have, so if you have modifying because of the sand mining the stream slope or modifying this sediment size. So, definitely there will be a change in the bed load also there will be a change and because of that change there will be a change in the morphology. So, that is what you would have to try to understand it when you have a equilibrium river in that position there is a balance between the stream power per unit weight with the product of the sediment load and the sediment size. So, if it is that the balancing is not there then either we can have a bank erosion or we can have a aggradations. That means, uh, the equilibrium concept will go out uh, it will start either the erosions or aggradations and the river may be morphologically uh, active will be there. So, if you look at that it is very uh, equilibrium concept with the hydraulic conditions of the left side which is talk about the stream powers or energy dissipations per unit weight and the sediment constants on the right side we have a q s and that is what uh, uh, q s stands for the sediment loads d s is the particle size as we discussed earlier. So, if you understand these figures and I try to tell you that please remember this balance which talk about how we modify a equilibrium reverse if you modify uh, by conducting a sand mining or you uh, in the cases you can increase the discharge or decrease the discharge or so how does it affects to the sediment size or the load. If I look at these equations, this equation has come with a very simplification of same regime equations with a some assumptions like if I look at the bed transport relationship which is a bed load per unit width is a functions of d s and the shield parameters. So, shield parameter is a ratio between the bed shear stress and the weight of the sediment particles. So, that is the this bed shear stress part is coming here in within the shield parameters. Then if you want to compute is total bed loads which will be the unit bed load per unit width and the multiplications of width of the river and that width of the river we can approximate with the previous regime equations where is 
Q B stands for unit bed load discharge, D S is a grand diameters in meters, Q B is a bed load discharge by volume. Okay. So, now if I substitute these equations, that is what is I am just substituting the W value, okay, which is a re relationship with Q d x and the s value and if I just rearrange it, I am getting the same format what is there in the lens concept if you look at that. Okay. So, if you look at that it is a just like a lens concept where is q to the power 1.11 x to the power 1.44 and uh, these multiplications are there. So, what it, it indicates is that if I use the regime equations also I can derive the possible form of this lens uh, formulas which establishing a equilibrium between the uh, stream powers or the uh, energy dissipation per unit weight with the sediment load, the river sediment load in terms of the bed loads what is the here. So, if you look at that way that is a downstream hydraulic relationship it is not for the defining the station process sediment rating curves. Okay. Uh, you try to understand that it is not for the sediment rating curves. So, if I increase the dominant discharge the Q plus okay, uh, expected there is a climate change and we will have the more oftenly this dominant discharge is going to increase it. If that is the conditions if I look that equations what we are going to increase to balancing that width can increase it because that is what is here the h can increase it that is there because as this q is increasing it we have to increase I to make a balancing effect it that. So, either the bank pool width will be increased the depth will be increased the slope has to decrease that is what is here to so, or the there will be decrease in the sealed parameters, but those are very long term process to change the sealed parameters like a d 50 values the bed material of the rivers will not change so drastically within the few years uh, within a decades. It is a very long term process happen for the alluvial depositions. If you look at that way if I summarize that if there is a climate change or deforestations okay, deforestations expecting this dominant discharge is in a positive trend. Okay. If it, that is the conditions from these Lacy's equations we can easily found out that river will be response at width to be increased okay, or the depth to be increased slope should reduce. Okay. So, that is what I am going to try to understand it the regime equations we can put it to know it how river is going to respond it if there is a dominant discharge is in a positive trend. That means, because of the climate change because of deforestations the dominant discharge is increasing it if that is the conditions the river width the flow depth is supposed to increase it where it is slope can also decrease it to have this because other part like a D 50 values the sealed, sealed parameter sea stress those are not going to change within a few years it takes longer times it is not a decadal levels it is a beyond the decadal levels. So, changing of the D 50 is that. So, if you can understand it if there is a increasing of the dominated discharge that is what is going to affect width and the flow depth and there will be a negative decreasing trend would be there in the slope the river slope. Now, if you look at uh, next questions if I look at that the dominant sediment discharge is in positive trend. Okay. So, if you have look at this Q B into D is equal to Q and S this is the discharge this is the sediment discharge this is a d values and s is a slope. If I making this is a positive value. So, to making the balance the slope has to go increase 
okay so that means the cellular slope can go for default slope okay can have a increase in the slope to balancing that or you can have a the velocity can increase it to increasing this part okay or you can have a significant increase of the shield stress values okay that's what is a qv increase means it's a they are in part of shear stress slightly decrease in channel width and the flow depth okay that's can be happen it but the grain size distribution comparatively lacks significant except in decreasing the shield parameters so you try to understand how the river is going to affect it if the dominant sediment discharge increases if we look at this uh, increasing uh, the lens concept is a relationship between the dominant sediment discharge with the d values and q and s the dis the discharge and the slope of the river as this q is increasing trend definitely to balance it either q to be increase the velocity is to be increasing trend or the slope to be increasing trend or you can find out will be a positive trend increasing on that part okay and there may uh, increasing in grain size are comparatively less significant okay except in the decrease in the shield parameters so if you can look at this diagram you can try to understand what is happening it when you have a river systems if there is a change of the flow change of the sediment discharge both will be affect in terms of changing this the flow geometry in terms of width depth and the slope and the shield parameters if our sediment is increasing there is be increasing in all these factor the slope the velocities as well as the tau stars okay so that way you can try it the conditions where uh, in which conditions we are going to have uh, the dominant sediment discharge will be in increasing trend or same way you can anticipate it if there is a q will be the negative okay as you have uh, the reservoirs you can regulate it the dominant discharges okay or or q b the sediment discharge is a negative trend that way you can also interpret it which you are going to increase which are going to decrease so the lens equation talks about us how we can anticipate it which are they are going to increasing trend of the flow parameters flow variables or the the channel characteristics that we should try to understand it now if you look at uh, very basic things the river bed degradations as uh, the like the for examples you have a uh, river initial level like this the width doesn't change it but the depth is increasing okay h not to h1 okay so when you have a lowering the bed elevations due to the erosion process okay if that is the river bed accepting the bed rate material is fine then channel incision would happen is mat material is sufficiently the course then river bed armoring is going to happen it for incised channel what it happened is that outgoing is axis then incoming sediment loads that's try to understand it why it it happens it the incoming sediment loads is a lesser the outgoing sediment load is more because it's a deepening the channels okay and the st stream slope in increasing the downstream directions which is just a reverse okay for a generally you go to downstream reverse stream flow stream slope should decrease it but if it's a inside channels you will have a increasing trend the scouring and degradation of the river bed that's what you can show it the result in channel increases the middle slope narrow and deep channel and there will be the banks will be the unstable so we can have a reduce the width okay before and afters and the shaft can come like this so you just look at how this river bed degradation happens it uh same way you can graphically you can uh, just to understand it is a very easy things to understand it 
that you can have a calving process, you can have an undercutting process, the high flow, low flow is there and this is the cutting part is there, gulling process and you have a incising process, entreaching process, you can have a like this, okay, though uh, deepening the channels or you can have a the armoring processes are happening it, okay. So, these are just looking the figures, you can understand it how the process are happening it and uh, we are not going more details, but let us have uh, the knowledge that as the flow variables are there and different type of different river degradations can happen. Now, if you look at uh, river plan forms, okay, if I look at nowadays is too easy from Google Earth imagery, we can see the satellite data and we can see what is happening to liver plant forms, okay, that is very easy to look at. Look at these three words, which are regular river manders, okay, it is uh, it's very easy, it is very interesting river manders, which is there in part of the Narmada rivers, but here this man, the wavelength or the amplitudes of the manders are the different, if you can look at these two rivers, okay, which uh, have a this, but if you look at the surf river, river manders can go for like this shaft, it can go like uh, this shaft and come back like this. So, if you look at this way, river mandering shafts can have a like this shaft. So, it is a quite interesting or if you look at the river which is in uh, Assam's uh, Dangori. So, if you look at the shafts, okay, it is it is it is too complex, okay, regular intense manders are there. The manders which are clearly visible and there are the complex river manders like this, if you look at these figures, okay, it is making, I intentionally I am sketching it to understand the nature's art form, okay. So, sometime it is quite re regular river manders and we can have a sometime very complex river manders, we can see it from the river. It talks about the basic characteristics of the flow variable, the bed materials, the bank materials, all it talks about. We should try to understand why it is river is a very regular manders to the regular with the intense manders or the complex rivers. But let us try to understand it, uh, simple river manders when you talk about that, how things happen. It. If you talk about any rivers, okay, river can have a shaft like this. It is very simple self, it can follow it, okay. River is controlled by these two narrow streets, okay. Two narrow streets which we call the nodal, okay. So, you can see that in a river many locations there is a nodal locations, the constraint reach river cannot have any degree of the freedoms, okay. That is the confined it. So, the mostly what it happens to the rivers that when you have a the, the sediment, the sediment uh, discharge, okay, the energy dissipations all are changing it, it is all are not a constant for the river systems. Sediment, sediment uh, discharge, energy dissipations all are changing it. So, river what it does it to response to this, uh, it is try to make it uh, uh, as different response at the different times, okay. Like for example, it can behave like this, again it can follow like this, okay. It can happen that, because at the nodal reach it is a constant that or it can follow this way, okay. So, river with a two constraint locations, river can have a different response. To know it, to make a these very complex rivers, we always look at a simple way with a circular arcs, we can you define it, the river behaviors between two constraint locations, how does it behave it with a, this may be different years, how the rivers are behaving it we try to make it different circles, okay. If you look at that case, this is the case we are looking at here. 
this is the case we are looking for here, this is the case we are looking for this case, this is the case is a very symmetric case we are looking from this or this is the case we are looking for the river to go like this or we are looking to river to go like this, 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 okay. Just you look at the shapes, okay, that is it is the nature's art, okay. That is we should try to understand it, okay. And with, with a circular arcs, we can define these manders, okay. And that is is indicated for us the science to know it, what the ratio between D by R, D is a vertical distance between center of successive circle uh, and R is a radius of circle, L R the length along the river, the uh, L V stands for length along the valley. So, if you look at that, this way river can have a, this different response and we should try to understand it, why does it happen and how river is going to respond in different way. These are really interesting work and we should look at more advanced levels that how the river is responding between two nodal locations with the different conditions. You can see it in next, I uh, will show it. Now, if you look it, if I go to the next level, very simplified way, if I make a river mandrings, okay, with starting from with a one inflection point to another inflection point, okay, this is my manders, okay. It is not exactly circular arc, okay. The theta m is a maximum angle here and the theta angle is changes it, okay. This is the two crossings and I am defined this is a mandar length, okay, this is the mandar length, mandar length, this is what mandar belt, mandar width. So, you can see that center to center point of the channels, we can define as a mandar width, we can define as a mandar belt with a side to side. So, if you look at this way, if you can define a mandar in river uh, and W stands for the width and R is a radius which is minimum here or at this crossing point will be the R will be infinity and you have the radius. If I define it, uh, there are many debate about this mandarin process. Uh, there is many say that this is a secondary flow which is playing the major roles. Perturbations theory, there is a stream hypothesis like minimum stream powers and uh, minimum variance concept. So, but if you look at that way, uh, we try to understand is if that uh, uh, mandarin length, mandarin width, radius of curvature and channel width and channel length and if I consider this theta is a cos function along this length, okay, this is the x distance along this river, okay. So, cos distance along this river, so if you talk it that and if theta is varying as a cos function of x, x is along this one, so if you look at this, that case you have a theta is a function, you can compute the mandar length, the so length along this curves that is what you can get it in these functions. If you compute the sinusity, okay, it is defined by uh, the length, river length divided by this the mandar length, okay. the river length divided by this mandar length, if I uh, put it that. So, I will get it uh, the in terms of theta m function. So, this sinusity is a playing the major roles. If you try to look at the earlier figure, the satellite imagery, we can compute the sinusity which is the, the ratio with the length by this mandar length, okay. By this, the mandar length will get it which is a function of the theta m. So, we can also get this radius of sub curvatures which are just a geometrical formulas. We can establish it and we can know it what will be the radius of curvatures. And if I look it, minimum radius of curvatures, I can get it, mandaring width also can get it a functions like this. And if I plot it, that is what is let me looking the properties of mandaring rivers and plot it with sinusity, a 
non dimensional forms uh, with mineral length by this Rm, there is a ratio, non dimensional ratio. If I put it, what I am getting is that there are three zones, clear cut zones. Okay. Here we are putting the theta m. Okay. So, when theta m in the degree scales is more than 110, then there is a neck cutoff will happen it. Okay. Below 30 degrees, you can call it sinusoid reverse, then it is called mandarin reverse. And if you try to plot it, how the sinusity increases, okay. how is this mandarin width by length is increases, okay. how this minimum radius of curvature is there. So, that is way we can have a characteristics of the reverse manders in terms three classifications of sinus, mandarins and neck cutoff. How do they are behaving of sinusity? That means, as the theta m is increasing, your sinusity is going to increasing, okay. mandarin width is going to increasing. The ratio between w m this uh, 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 mandarin length will be increasing trends and you will have a the minimum radius of curvatures will follow this. So, these indicating us what is the characteristics happens when you have a minimum radius of curvature for given manders is coming out to be 75 degrees. Okay, that is what if you look at that. Okay. That is what uh, you can look at that and mandarin width in increase rapidly as theta m exceeds 90 degree, it reaches the value 3.25 at the cutoff. So, okay. So, what you are doing that uh, it, 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 it is the value, if you look at this ones, it is reaches around 3.25, okay. after that this process is cut off it. Okay. So, reaches the value, theta m exceeds the 90 degree, the increasing strains, vendor width is increases rapidly this zone okay. and reaches the value 3.2 Mander's cut off happens which, which is a theta will be the 125 degree. So, the cut off will happen it here 125 degree. So, these, these are the basic characteristics if you have a knowledge about that looking the Mandarin characteristics we can identify at what conditions it is going to have the Mandar cut off. Now, if I look it there is a lateral migrations river migrations okay. river also migrate in the lateral directions. If I quantify the energy gradient along the valley, here I am talking about energy gradient along the valley, which is the ratio between energy losses over a manders having the wavelength and the friction slope as S naught. So, we can compute what will be the energy losses in the valley directions and the energy losses which is in terms of your the basic the sinusity functions. Okay. And if you try to look it uh, with theta m and the reverse sinusity, try to understand these figures okay, which is very interesting figures are indicating it that if I put for a river manders you have a theta m value which is in a radiance and I also have a ratio between radius curvatures and the width, I have the sinusity values, the functional relationship of transversal shear stress will follow like this, longitudinal shear stress will follow like this. Okay. Just you look it, this is a relative shear stress is showing it for the transversal shear stress and the longitudinal. So, it is quite interestingly at 1.34 sinusity the theta m values uh, uh, and the rm m w values at that location so you have a transversal shear stress is much higher okay. after that there will be decreasing trend and before that. So, this is a sediment transport if you look it this is a low part and this is the high part is indicating how the sediment transport is happening it. So, uh, let me have a put it, 
the sinusity varies with a the theta m, the ratio of the shield parameter for meandering channels is a function of the theta m. If when theta m is above, above 90 degrees, shield parameters of a meandering channel is less than half of the straight channels. So, you can try to interpret this the graphs giving a relationship between theta m the sinusity with a relative shear stress that understanding can give us how does happens the lateral river migrations. If we look at these figures of the two figures first let us see we discuss about the Kameng rivers okay, which have a uh, 2002 1988 okay, it is a span of uh, 14 years. Uh, if you look at that, uh, these are nodal points uh, where the rivers are something like this okay, and uh, further it changes the rivers, the figures are this. So, there is a lateral migrations of the rivers. Okay. So, if you look at that, there are the lateral migrations of a river or I can say it rivers behave like the pendulums. Okay. If this is the nodal locations, okay, the this is the locations of the nodal locations. The river is wave like a pendulums, so it's go like this, okay, just swing it, okay. What is the time periods of this swinging is always a big question mark. What is the time periods? Does it a four years? Does it a twelve years? Does it does the time periods? acts the 50 years, we do not know it. That is the concept we should look at and if we just try to understand it, uh, it works like a pendulum and it has a time periods and what is the time periods of these lateral migrations that is we do not have a much precise answer for that. But if you look at that uh, uh, river course is 100 years old, 70 years old. 50 years, 30 years existing course of river Ganga at the Patna. There are the two nodal locations. That is a nodal locations. This is also a nodal locations. The two is confined. The nodal locations are there. Two confined lo nodal locations are there. The rivers are weaving. It's a very good pictures which provided by this Indian Railways uh, Institute of Civil Engineers. You can interestingly look at what is happening these rivers how this uh, this rail cutter is existing channels okay the existing channels are behaving like this okay just if you look at the 70 years back it was here okay and these channels again bifracting it here so the bifractions are happening here and these are oscillating behavior as i said it in this case it is oscillating between the two points. If I look at that, I have the spring, it can oscillate it like this, okay. it can have a oscillations like this. Okay. Just you try to understand it, if there is a two points and the string can oscillate it in the lateral directions and it has a time period here you can see it revolved uh, 50 years back that the conditions and the 100 years back and 72 years back it was here. So, it is it's just move it from north to south, okay. the river flows from west to east as you know it, west to east and the northern bank and southern banks. So, if you look at this river very interesting figures are there, 7200 years back the river used the south bank. Now, it has shifted to the in the northern bank. We do not know how long it will be there, maybe another 50 years it will be returned back to the south bank and how the things are happening here. So, these time periods of oscillations, lateral directions all are big questions mark for us and we should try to understand our river systems, how does they behave it at as a lateral river migrations. There are a lot of data is nowadays available, the old data and the new data set what we are capturing it, we should try to look at how does have these time periods as indicating the two rivers, one is the Kameng rivers and other is Ganga river 
at the Patna locations. Now, if you look at uh, coming to a regional relationship, okay, which is uh, uh, very interesting to know it that way back 1863, Ferguson's established that the ML is a meandering length, okay, ML stands for the meandering length is a six times of the width, okay, which is necessary to know it to give enough space to the rivers. That means, if a width river is 1 kilometers, the meandering length will be the 6 times of that, okay. it will be the 6 times of that. That means, it will be 6 kilometers, okay. that is what is ML is that. MB is the width of meander belt. So, we are talking about this width of meander belt, which is in 1902 very simplified, I can say that the Mander belt, if I approximate it, is 18 times of W. Is this there a spatial frequency and it also maintains the reverse. 6 and 18, just try to understand it. That means, if you width river, if I know it, its space width of the river is a half kilometers, then 9 kilometer is a meandering belt width. If a river width is a 2 kilometers, then is a 36 kilometer is a meandering belt width. So, we should try to understand it, not look these equations only, which is developed way back in 1863, 1902, okay. it is almost 118 years previously, there was no satellite imagery and all. So, if you look at that way, the, it, it, it is talk about a concept that there is a spatial scale of meanderings that meandering length will be 6 times of width, meandering belt width will be the 18 times which we easily we can remember it okay, uh, if you are not looking at precisely. So, if you look at that English which is considered the American rivers and some of the rivers from Odisha state of uh, India which is such that this ML and MB can have a ratio of MB by ML I can say that it is a close ratio of 0.35 or I we can approximate is a 0.33 that is the same concept. That means, the meandering length and the meandering belt will be the 3 times, it is 3 times that is what is we should try to understand it, it is a 3 times. So, if you look at that is what is uh, Jefferson's data and uh, with this. So, if you look at the length and width with the resistance, the same way if you look at that uh, Leopold at 1964 considering the large rivers, again it has come with in terms of width is a 11 times and M B is a 3 times. Okay. Okay. So, here uh, in case of the large rivers, the M L is coming about to 11 times and the 3 times of the width okay. and if you can look it, it is closer to that. Same way if you look at that from experiment model data uh, can have a ML MB relationship which is in functions of the discharge and this comes is established with more detail with a W by D ratios and the ML is a function of the Q and the M value and CTL 1970 also established more detail between these non dimensional faults, okay, which is considering the 42 river data. So, what am I want to, to look at that uh, when you look at this regime relationships which is extracted from the river, which is way back, still it is hold coated, and there is a some spatial frequency, it is there in a meandering plant forms, which is the 6 and 18, which is easy to remember it. Okay. Uh, if a width of the river is 1 kilometers, the meandering length will be the 6 kilometers and meandering belt width will be the 18 kilometers. So, that is that is try to understand it. Okay. And also we talk about the width and discharge in the same order. Okay. If it width is 1000 meters, so we will have the discharge about the 10,000 
dominate this charge. So, you, ca you can try to understand it how things are half and seed in terms of dominate this charge in terms of ML, MB and this. So, what I am telling that if you look at this regional relationship what is developed way back in 100 years it also tell a story to us either we have to accept it or we have to understand considering that we can understand the reverse and more precisely we have a more data now we can always look back at these regional equations how whether they are valid or not valid because if you look at these equations they 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 are different but what order of their difference when you talk about the reverse with the plot planes the insane's reverse the reverse in the plot plane this is the 50 stream raising it the european rule of thumb okay thumb rule says that that or you have a silt clay percentage which is control this characteristics mean flow discharge you can have this some series and you can have a this so we should have a, a better understanding of that how these empirical equations is providing us the knowledge and those knowledge of river we can implement it uh, when you are trying to design river training works now if you look at it again it's a compiled form of river regime relationship in terms of width okay width formula is the depth formula is slope the velocity and the bed material size okay if you look at this formulas the lacy's formulas is comes from evolved from canal data what we discussed in the last class nixon's formula is based on the uk rivers pitts formulas are from usa the statistical methods from this indian rivers also we have muddy bench formulas is from canal canal and river data so, if you look at that, uh, the, the canal is more geometrically and the bed material wise not variabilities there, but if you talk about the rivers, it is having lot of variabilities. So, if you look at the Lacy's equations, again I to put it, the W will be the 4.8 times of Q of 0 0.5, okay. so it is a 0 0.5 square root. The same way if I look at the Fetis formulas which is from the USA data, we talk about only the difference between these coefficients 4.4, 4.4 Q to the power 0 0.5. So, only these multiplication factors are changing it a to the power a Q B then same way this Nixon's also this. So, if you look at this width are having the more or less the same formulas, but in case of Indian rivers, we have W is 1.6 Q, okay. D is a flow depth 1.5. So, in Indian river, it has a different relationship as compared to this. Why? Those questions we can always look at. Uh, if you look at it, if I look at the depth formulas, okay, it is very interesting now. If you look at the Nixon's and the Petit's formulas, which give is the flow depth E j functions of 0 0.539 q to the power 1 by 3, okay, q to the power 1 by 3, where is Petit's formulas just a slight bit modified with a 0 0.635 q to the power 1 by third. Okay? So, if you look at that only these coefficients of these two things are changing it. So, we can know the flow depth if I know the discharge accurately, the dominant discharge if I know it accurately. But in case of the Indian river as I modified the statistical part which is give it 3.6 Q to 0 0.8 and also a functions with width. So, in India refers this, but in case of this Petit's formula is from the uh, USA, uh, Nixon's formula is derived from the UK rivers, 
more or less the same. But when you talk about Indian rivers, we have the values are there. And you know it, we can get the flow depth using the Lacy's equations. So, it always indicates that we can have a some sort of the regional equation. So, same way you can look it how the equations are there in case of slope, in terms of the velocity and this. Okay. So, let me put it the velocities is very close to from the Fetis equations that 0 0.5 q 0 0.2. Okay. So, that means if you know the discharge, you can know this approximate velocity can be there from the Petit's discharge that. But uh, before concluding that, these regional equations are good if it is a derived it properly with a more reliable hydrologic data like a discharge, more reliable discharge data set, the flow depth, the width if you have a more reliable data set and the deriving of these regional equations really plays a major roles for a river engineers. Now, if you look at the next levels, if I talk about how the lateral river migrations happen, it, and if you look at these behaviors of winding of the river erosions happen, excess of sedimentations near the opposite banks. Okay, if you can look at how does this happen, it we can regularly in pant, irregular can happen or it can have absence. Okay, types of mantle skulls. Okay, it can have a narrowing the results of the sedimentations near one back excess of erosion rate opposite side and uh, you can understand these things which are very simple sway uh, how does uh, river manders happen it types of the scrollings that regular or faint or irregular or in case of absent can also happen it okay let's uh, today we uh, let us conclude these lectures uh, having talking about our understanding of rivers if I quote from Nancy's uh, quote that Patna is one of the oldest continuously inhabited river Rhine cities in the world situated on the southern bank of the river Ganga. So, what I am to talk about that we should have a more knowledge as we are close to habitat to the Ganges rivers is the oldest inhabited river Rhine cities. You can uh, get the history of the partner cities and try to know it, how things have evolved in a partner cities which is the river Rhine cities in the world, the oldest ones and that is the story of the Gangas and the uh, partner city uh, as particular to Bihar. Thank you.